Hi, my name is Nathaniel Pete. I'm the CEO and also founder of The Safety Box. I'm also a patron to the EY Ernest & Young Foundation and also run another company which is called Gen X. It's a solar energy company which empowers women and youth in Africa and the Caribbean. One of the main reasons why I basically set up the safety box was born out of the great need to proactively address all the growing concerns of antisocial behaviour, violence, low self-esteem, gang violence, violence in prison, youth that are basically victimised, young people that have been traumatised and face depression. Um, it's a strategy that I came up with alongside friends that are teachers, people that work in the police force, Ofsted inspectors, and also young people listening to what they want in order to develop something that will help them. We formulated a curriculum that could be embedded directly into the national curriculum here in the UK and ran it in a number of schools. We've been operational for about 11 years now. We've worked in prisons, we've worked in youth centres, we've worked with YOYs, we've worked with all age groups from young people as young as five right the way up to post 21. So the work that we actually do with the very young ones is actually getting their mindsets right. So these are games, it's fun exercises, it's actually looking to see if they've got any trauma. So we've got a child now, you can't put them in front of a cams officer. <laughs> You're basically able to draw a picture, colour, or put it into music, or something, or games, or colours or shapes. And this basically then will show basically how they feel. So you can scribble a picture, how do you feel? And the colours that they're scribbling it with, the, the way that they're doing it, and it's actually helping them, assisting those ones. And they get them to affirm in their mind, I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm a leader. And that basically helps them to rise up in their mindset. Because a lot of children actually hear negative things when they're at home. You can't do this. You're not able to do that. Get out of the room, shut up, be quiet. And so what we try to do is reverse that again and give them positive programming in their mind. And you take it up to another level, you make it relevant for primary school kids. So you're actually talking to them about how to avoid gangs because they're groomed into gangs and people offer them things, to hold things, to carry things, to drug traffic. And so what we do is we teach them methodology of how to watch that. And then there was also the ones which are scared and frightened. So a lot of youth pick up weapons because they're frightened. So we give them effective tools to avoid it by reading body language, seeing basically what type of young person might attack them, um, reading um, the dilation of pupils or, or the movement, the hard movement of the body or the raised shoulder or the hands in the pants and basically they can understand and see that someone's actually palming a weapon or doing something else and these are practical skills that a young person can use to protect themselves but then it goes a level deeper than that because we give them high level confidence building strategies where we teach them self-defense against knives these are non-aggressive techniques using what we call gross motor functional movement gross functional gross motor functional movement is your largest muscle groups you only use those muscles in a state of fear and panic and so by plugging directly into that motor memory if I throw something at your face, your hands are going to go up like If I do that at a camera, you'll probably blink. And in the same way, our body reacts to it. So if I get a football and I kick it, your hands are going to go up. And so what we do is we train the body with defensive tactics using these natural instinctive types of defense mechanisms. Moving the hands from this position to this position means that you're, they're protecting then their veins and they're protecting their heart region. And we teach and train them that and that gives them a level of confidence, packing it then with high level personal development and real tools that they can use. When we're looking at secondary school, we use self-defense as well, but then we also plug it directly into the curriculum. So there's GCSEs um, that they have, uh, for example, uh, PSHE, Personal Social Health Education, um, where you know, we can actually plug directly into the, 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 the way they interact with each other. And there was something that the government had a few years ago, in fact, it's called Every Child Matters. And within those pillars, we actually use a lot of those pillars still. In fact, it's just being repackaged. It doesn't really matter about government because we just recycle stuff over and over again. We call it different names. But these strategies have worked in terms of helping young people. And we know that by delivering an alternative type of curriculum, an alternative type of education for this profile of young person, which oftentimes doesn't do well with their memory in memorizing stuff, by teaching this alternative type of curriculum, it helps them then to develop, it helps them to understand that they have purpose in their life. And when we take it further up, we look at then the cure violence methodology. 
and that basically looks at the public health approach and so that's when we're working then with young people that are highly violent that have had situations where they have carried a knife where they've been active in violence where they're engaged in violence where they're arming and equipping themselves up to actually go out and do something or be on a hit as they call it and what we do with them is we use then credible messengers to try to interrupt that perpetual cycle to use high level conflict mediation which aids them then in disarming and disequipping them and then we package it with high level personal development with enterprise education with the way in which they now can earn an income by developing a skill set or by creating a product and showing them that they have grants accessible for youth and then they're able to elevate from that. So we recognize that a lot of things start in a school and you know kids are in school for eight hours, seven hours a day. Um, that's where they learn most of the things but what happens when they get arrested? What happens when they actually go into prison? Um, for a number of years we were looking at actually doing programs in communities and the moment we kind of do a program in a community we go away after it calms down it rises back up again and so we we realized that we had to go to the source and so the source oftentimes is the young men that have been in prison. The source is normally from those guys which then come back out and now they've got their stripes up now. They're much more credible on the road and they're able to mobilize and pull people. They're influential. And so what we do is we go into prison and we work with men that are incarcerated for high level violent crimes. The work has been really great. Um, we actually implemented the first, along with our partners at the time, um, one of the first cure violence methodologies in Cookhamwood Prison in 2012-2013, where we reduced the level of group violence by 95% in a year. Never been achieved at that level uh, in, a, in a UK prison before. Um, that was a number of years ago, and. It has really grown in terms of the methodology into something new now, which is known as the Aspire Higher Program. I'm actually wearing the top, can you see it? It's a golden, it's a golden eagle. And basically, we have a philosophy saying that if you associate with chickens, you're never gonna fly with the eagles. And the thing is, the thing about the chicken is this, yeah? The chicken, basically, is eaten and killed. That's the road. They're killed on the road. The chicken, basically, is either put into bondage in a pen laying eggs that's the that's the, all of the line that the drug dealers have got the young people going on they're imprisoned in that gang culture and then you've got the actual chicken pen which is where they're locked up and so we have the aspire higher violence reduction and anti-knife crime program which is proactively engaging high-risk offenders in prison here in the uk we're working with men that age from 18 right the way through into their 60s and uh, they've been violent so on the Aspire Higher Violence Reduction Program we do in prison, we've had outstanding results where we've seen a reduction in adjudications, a 63% reduction in adjudications. For those of you that don't know what that is, that's almost like, um, it's almost like an arrest. It's like where you've got to go to the governor and the governor then forms a judgment over you. Uh, if they were outside, that would represent them actually being arrested and, and having a problem on the street. We've reduced that in prison by 90, sorry, by 63% on this last bit of data that we've done on the Aspire Higher Program over the cohorts of 10 men with uh, pre-data and post-data of 90 days. Um, the work is really pivotal and um, the keeper part list we have reduced that as well. Uh, we've reduced the uh, amounts of negative entries and now got positive entries. The program is working. It's a personal development and violence reduction uh, initiative that both has the ability to empower and also change mindsets of highly violent young men. These are the ones which come back out. These are the ones which basically call the shots. These are the influencers that have the ability then to then talk to the young people which are our violent and get them out of that. They are credible, the most credible messengers. And by changing one of them, we have the impact that we have to, in order to change the mindset of many others. So there's a number of pillars that we use in our methodology. Um, we totally use the public health model um, in its way and its entirety, but then we also add extra pillars that are useful for the UK audience. Um, some of the things that we work with, inset training for teachers that have done their training outside of London 
And so what we do is we will do an inset training that allows these teachers that are not aware of the inner city issues around violence, gangs and crime, upskilling their level so they're able to spot it earlier. What does that do for the young person? It safeguards them. What it also does is it helps them to stop the perpetuation and the scaling of the issue in their school. It helps to keep the, the, the school safe and it helps also to keep the pupils safe. That inset training is needed. So they understand basically that the colloquial language that they're using may be wrong. Um, example, you might be drawing trauma out of a child. If you are a very high powered motivational teacher, you're a good teacher, but you might be drawing trauma out of the child when you're saying, come on, be strong. You, come on, you're a strong boy, you're a strong child or a mentor, a learning mentor that's in the school. Come on, you're strong, you're strong. Come on, you gotta fight through this, you gotta fight through this. But you know what? By you moving your hands, by you actually saying it, by you being forceful with them, that's the methodology you've got which you think is helping, it's actually drawing trauma out of them because they're thinking at the back of their mind, well, my dad used to beat me up. My dad was strong, my dad used to hit me. And so that's actually pulling them into a place and so they're not trauma trained. And this is a way in which I believe that the, 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 the staff need to be cognizant. And every time we go into the school, we say, have your teachers done any type of counseling training? Are they able to listen and understand and give strategies? Do they understand how to close somebody down when they're, when they're listening to a child talking about their issue? Do they know how to shut them down? Do they know how to stop that trauma from developing and manifesting to something else? And this is why it's so important that teachers have a level of uh, an extra layer of training, especially if they're working in areas with high crime and violence. This is something that we try to really implement in every, in every place that we go. Um, I've had one of our workers who is actually a trained psychologist and has an experience of actually serving a prison sentence. And <clears throat> one, we were working in a, in a school and there was a young person that began to cry in the class. He immediately began to work with that pupil. We've worked in other schools, in fact in this area that we're in, a school not too far from here in fact where we had another young girl that had actually been abused and again we had somebody in our a group who was able then to help her through that process and then refer back into CAMS to, for that further support. So it's very, very important that we safeguard their mind as well. We are focused on developing um, the teachers as well as the pupils, so the right messaging is taught. And so when we're doing this stuff in the school, uh, we ensure that um, the methodology and that the messaging that we give them, for, for example, uh, you are an eagle, not a chicken, or aspire higher, um, or you can achieve it. Um, don't say can't, it's a swear word. And by actually telling the other teachers, they reinforce those messaging. Um, and then the culture then changes within the institute, within that, within that environment. When we're talking about the mentors, um, we don't use a lot of guys that are, are fresh off the street. Um, we will work with those guys, but we don't put them facing the young people straight away. Um, the people that we use are experts in their field and credible messengers. They've achieved in their life. They've achieved things in their life despite having a hard start. Those guys are the most powerful people to help to inspire them. And you see, when you can inspire a young person, you're actually sowing purpose into their life because now you're saying to them that they can do it. When they align with purpose, it's really hard to distract them with other things. When you can show them another methodology of how they can earn an income, that's where we have a breakthrough. And so the credible messengers are very inspirational characters that help to lift them up and show them a different way. Um, where we're talking about uh, youth that carry weapons for protection. What we do is we teach them how to defend against knives. We teach them with personal development tools and strategies, saying that if you are a happy person, you're gonna attract happy person people. If you smile, if I smile, you're gonna smile back. If you put out something negative, something negative is gonna come back. So by changing them and showing them that every action has a response and an outcome, we program that mind to say, let's take responsibility for this so we don't get this outcome. Let us show you a strategy of how you can protect yourself and get rid of that fear in carrying a weapon for protection. 
teaching them how to defend against the weapon using non-aggressive techniques. It lifts their self-confidence, it boosts their ability to actually avoid, to walk confidently so that they don't become a victim. Now, there's a lot of data that shows that sport and doing martial arts helps you. It boosts your confidence and this is one method that we use to do this to help them. There's other things that we do which form around body language and training them on how to move and how to um, stand and how to walk and this is general safety tools um, to avoid conflict. We show them how you can be carrying a knife and someone else is carrying a knife and you're more likely to use a knife as a way of disarming them from that knife. Um, the strategies are, the strategies are, are, are multi-pronged and um, we're, we're experts in, in delivering, uh, we're experts in understanding it um, and developing levels of vocational qualifications which are important for young people that are selling, selling drugs. They want to earn money really quick and so we have the Idea Into Reality program which uses business strategies and skills to help them to develop um, that, that, that concept. A lot of them are into music or, or doing, having a clothing line um, and so what we've done with a number of young people is help them to develop their clothing lines um, on a Princess Trust type of program, having investment at the end of it and then them doing that Princess Trust qualification, they now can see a tangible way of how they can make money. And oftentimes these young people don't have they don't have like the, the GCSEs. This is, the, this is their lifeline to survival. And so a number of years ago, I was like, you know what? We are a small little organization doing our little bit, but there's so many young people that are, don't have work. 16 to 24 year olds in the UK, you know, at the time it was about 890,000 in the UK. And this is where then we had a great firm, um, EY, which um, had its CSR program that now is a foundation. It's called the EY Foundation. There is a skills gap with young people that are leaving university and there's also a skills gap and there's a dropout with the amount of young people that basically don't have the grades to succeed in life. And so what the EY Foundation is doing is developing a schools to work program whereby the right strategies can be taught to young people leaving school getting them onto a CMI leadership qualification, giving them a, men a mentor that helps them to then have a pathway into an into a apprentice position which leads them to a job. Um, it's about work. Um, most of them don't believe that they have the skill sets to get a job. They, they failed their exams and so this is a way and a strategy of actually getting young people into work. The EY Foundation is doing an amazing work around um, helping young people into work and uh, they're in 18 locations in the UK now and they work with young people that are in care, gives of care, uh, young people that have not basically passed their exams um, and it's a way to actually signpost into, signpost into a, a strategy of, and a way in which they can then become qualified. This is about work, it's about showing them how they can have money. The issues is poverty. You know, anywhere there's posit poverty, people are going to want to get things. Most of the guys we talk to in prison, why are you, why was you selling drugs? Oh, do you know what? I was trying to make some money in it. Man, 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 man got to sell the food in it still because I need the money. It's the money thing. I'm on an estate. I was helping mum. I was helping mum with the kids, man, because I don't want my mum to suffer. But guess what? I wanted to be a pilot. But guess what? I wanted to be a musician. But guess what? I wanted to be a football player. But guess what? I wanted to be. I wanted to run my own studio. But guess what? I wanted to open my studio. I said, you know, I'm, I have to do this side hustle to go and do it in it. So I'm going to do the side hustle and then basically I'm going to open my thing. Because they have these aspirations, but they haven't had anybody to tell them how to do it. And this is why we are doing that, by why we are showing them. We just started another program, which um, I came from last night. It's called Motivation Monday. And we ask for young people to come out to this session so we can teach them about it. So some of the major issues that are concerned, we're dealing with young people that have trauma, you're dealing with poverty, you're dealing with the lack of education, you're dealing with the lack of opportunities, you're dealing with low confidence, you're dealing with lack of self-confidence, you're dealing with young people that have huge issues with mental 
problems be caused by the issues that have happened in the home. You're talking about um, young people that um, have been ostracized because of where they've come from. And these are the issues that they face. And so it's a multi-pronged issue which requires a multi-pronged strategy of how to interrupt it um, using really disruptive methodologies. A lot of people don't like the self-defense stuff that we do because it's disruptive. But you know what? It works. Because if I can save a young person from being stabbed, or I can disarm them because when they come to him saying to them, do you know what, put down the knife, in the back of their mind, they're living in an estate where people are carrying knives. How are you going to tell a man to put down a knife, right? If they're on the state, estate and other people are carrying knives, a young person that's, that's vulnerable, they think they're going to equip themselves with a knife in order to protect themselves. How are they going to put down a knife? By you talking to them, we'll give them a practical skill. Show them practical skills on how to defend themselves. That gives them the confidence so they don't need to carry the knife. We'll show them how to read a situation so they can spot danger from a distance, which stops them from basically um, getting in harm. We talk about getting the trauma out of the youth by doing one-to-one -one work with them and unpacking all of that trauma and then putting stuff into them that's positive and giving them positive mindset training, personal development skills of how to break bad habits and get new habits, teaching them about drugs and the impact on their mind. We show them basically positive mentors, positive role models, individuals that have made it in life, not guys that are just dropped out of prison, that have been on the road being a youth worker for the last two years that still bun weed. We're not talking about them, man. We're talking about guys that have completely cleaned their life off, got off of the drugs, doing great things with business, are entrepreneurs now, running their business and have the ability to show them them how to do it. We talk to the young people that have the ability basically to spit, um, to MC, to rap and they're rapping negative but we use it as an exercise to get the trauma out of them because when they start to spit life now with their tongue it's a way of therapy by writing it down it is writing there writing 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 out all that pain onto a piece of paper and that creative writing now leads into a therapeutic style and mindset shifting in that person and that assists them to then think about doing stuff differently help them to go into a studio record that with our partners that we work with and by working with our partners you know where we've got individuals that have got expertise in different areas it assists us to have a greater impact on young people it's not about doing this by ourselves it has to be with credible messengers and people that pull the results out we have statistics that show the work that we do works and it's about replicating as much of that as we can um, I've got to big up all the people that are in the space because it's not an easy job and I know that all of us are passionate about doing this there's multiple ways of of hitting this and um, you know it's about just talking more about the issue so we can create a change and allow young people to aspire higher so that they don't fall and descend into the grave so they don't fall and fail in this life so that UK youth can actually be some of the best youth in Europe.